Good morning, kids. It is your turn, my children of God. Um, we do a second offering for our children divisions. And this week, it's for CVC Student Aid. And they started school. They're back in. And if you uh, need a really good place to send your kids, they have the best class sizes around compared to some of the local schools. Guys, I teach at Downey High School. I have a class of 39 students. And you need to it really consider that they, you know, I'm trying to give my kids as much attention as possible, but CVCA, their class sizes are in a good range. So if you look around, pick up the offering, guys, and come on up because I've got a story for you. There you go. Right in there. Perfect. got most of it. All right. All right. Come on. There's two more. Right over there. You might grab them. All right. Okay. You made it. Good. All right. That's a nice, nice and full there, huh? All right. Got it in? All right. And you're going to take it today? Perfect. All right. So you guys know what this is? A life vest. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and you can put our pictures up if you want. Um, you know how the life vest works, right? It only works if you actually wear it, though. Remember that little fact. It goes on, and if you wear it like this, it's going to fall off. So you do have to have it all zipped up, and whoever wore this one last was a lot smaller than me. Um, because I have to give me some expanse here. All right, so when you go kayaking, and there's some pictures behind you and pictures in the back, so can you see the ones back there? Okay, so when you go kayaking, um, nope, they went too far. I'm going to go back one. Oh, now I got Harold's. All right, Utica, there it is. One of the places we go is Lake Utica. And Utica is a gorgeous lake. Can you see the little picture in the back? If not, you can turn around and look at the one in the front of the church. Now, it's a beautiful place to go. It is found right up here in the High Sierras, and there are actually two lakes next to it. You get on Highway 4, you just keep on going till you find Spicer Meadow Reservoir Road, and then you just turn down that road about eight miles. There'll be a left turn. When you get to that left turn, you're going to take, at the T, you're going to take another left. And you're going to come up to Lake Utica. And so when we go out to Lake Utica, we'll take our gear. We will be wearing our life jackets and paddling around. And some of the things we saw, we went up this summer, and it was gorgeous. And you can see Mr. Reeve up there. He's got his binoculars out. And you want to know what he's looking at? He is looking at this. Oops, these two things. All right, let me go back one, because I'm going too fast. There it is. Spotted sandpiper. See the little baby? Isn't he cute? And he, they were just wa walking their way on the shoreline. And then we also saw these other two birds. That one on the left is a nuthatch, and that's a hermit warbler. Really lots and lots of fun. Okay? And there's the lake again. And you'll notice there's little islands out there. There's little spots. All birds will end up on those. And it's just really a fun paddling spot. And um, if you find this tree, the tree's a special tree. It's called an incense tr cedar. And not only is it a special tree, it's been there a long time. Because we hit a geocache there. 
and the geocache is still there. If you guys know geocaching, it's where you take the coordinates and you go out and find it. And the logbook was there. And if you read on the logbook, we planted this Memorial Day 2002. That means this geocache has been there for 20 years. And it's the, you can see it got a little wet. I love the one on this page. You go through the logbook, you read whoever's found it. And this one says, a bear took two of our food sacks and he had a good meal. <laughs> there were some other funny ones in there, but it was really kind of fun going through the log. And we go up there and check on it just to, over the years. And this is the island that we like to camp on because you can paddle out with your kayak, you can set up your tent, you can actually camp on this island. And it's just been a lot of fun over the years. And so you can kind of see we got a bathtub ring going on there now, just high Sierras, just gorgeous looking. Um, it's a little down this year. And um, we were looking, as you go through, you can find, can you see the little damselfly there and its reflection? It's like, whoa, we got a little mirror going on here admiring itself. And um, there was some water lilies there, and I was testing out my new camera with the close-up lens, and you can really get in close. And so that was kind of fun to play with. And as we were continuing to paddle, we would see all these people on paddle boards going by, and that was kind of fun watching them. And in the afternoon, one of the sad things about this lake, well, it's not sad, it's just you have to prepare for it, the wind comes in. And when the wind comes in, it gets wavy and it gets bumpy. And when it gets bumpy, it's like it's a little harder to paddle. So we were headed back in in the evening against the wind and against the waves. So we're kind of hugging the shore. And I was a little bit of head of Harold because he had stopped to take some of those bird pictures. And he um, caught up with me and all of a sudden I heard Help me! Somebody help me! S help somebody! And Harold looked at me and says, is that a kid? And I said, I don't think so. And we looked around, and we found over in there, a oh, lady on one of those paddle boards had fallen off. And remember I told you the wind came up. The wind was blowing her outward. She couldn't flip over her paddle board, and she was in a panic. And you know what? A lot of those paddleboarders don't wear life backs. And so she was down in the water, trying to turn her board over, trying to grab the handles, and she was scared. Have you ever been that scared? Ever got yourself in trouble and you're really, really scared? Okay, so Harold and I, of course, zoom. I mean, talk about paddling fast. We headed, she was quite a ways away from us, and we headed fast across the shore. But if you looked around, we weren't the only ones that heard her calling. Two boys, about Jaden's age and Rohan's age, we could see them starting to run. They took off from the sh where the ramp area is, and you could see them running around the edge of the lake. You can see those lake edges. They were barefoot even. And I found that out when we caught up with them. And they were headed that way. And there was another kayak a little further out heard the cry too, and he, you could see him start paddling. There was a lady, and you notice they got some pretty little cliffs out there that they were cliff jumping in. And I've never seen anybody get on her paddle board so fast and paddle on one of those stand-up paddle boards. So she had four of us converging on her all at once. We got there fast because we have the faster kayaks. Um, plus we were closer in, I think. But we uh, got there, and she had calmed down by then. And she was starting, she managed to slowly get her board over, and she was managed to crawl on top, but you, you know that pounding. Your heart's just going really fast after you've been so scared. And so we had our next newest piece of safety equipment with us, and that's this one. Ask me about Uyama's floating by us at the river in 1,600 cubic feet per second and why I bought this piece of equipment. Um, that's another story for another day. But this lovely little thing is a throw bag. So if she had been in trouble, we would just basically send it sailing out, and then you could just start pulling her in. Well, she, we didn't have to use that piece of equipment. 
but we have it. It's a lifeline, right? Okay, we have this little piece of equipment. They call it a donkey tail. We were able, yeah, I know, it's like, there you go. Um, but we were able to connect it to our kayak, and Harold has a waist belt that he wears. That's what this is kipping into. And then we were able to hook it to hers. And so we pulled her in, and of course by now she's calmed down. And we were pulling her in, and I, she, I said, where's your paddle? She says, over that way. So I went up and found her paddle. We got her all calmed down. The two boys were her sons. And they had come running because they heard mom calling, and so they were off at the edge. Mom, are you okay? Yeah, your mom's okay. We'll pull her in. They were barefoot. I mean, those guys, they must have loved their mom. They really ran a long ways to get to her. I was just, it was like, oh, honey, that's so sweet. <laughs> that's a mom's heart for you, right? And so we were managed to get her in and rescue her. But you know that feeling? If you get so scared, all right. So I put a verse up here because I think of this any time we go on one of these trips. And I pray, Lord, please keep our going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Lord, just keep our group safe. So if you go out on boats, wear your life jacket because she didn't have one with her and that's you know, she was being blown out by the wind. And also, if you're able to, carry some safety equipment with you. And you know what the safety equipment we have is that we don't sometimes use? You have a Bible at home, and your Bible is going to do you no good unless you do the reading of it, unless you actually use it. So enjoy your day. And I hope you guys have lots of adventures. Okay, you can head back to your seats.